نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل لقدت من لسانی یفقه قولی امری السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ How are you all? I hope everyone must be in the best state of health in Iman. Alhamdulillah, we have entered into the last Ashar of Ramadan and I know all of you are trying your best to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy with you, to make him radi with you. While going through the last 10 nights of this Ramadan, it's worth visiting the Surah, Surah Al-Qadr. That is dedicated to Laylatul Qadr alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not honored any other night more than the night of Al-Qadr. So what does Allah say about this grand night? This is a short description of Surah Al-Qadr today. A journey, a short journey. We are going through it right now with the aim that we can make the best of this night, Laylatul Qadr. Inshallah. I hope all of you can see my screen. You can tell me over chat. Alhamdulillah. Without any exaggeration, all of us know that this night was the greatest night in the history of humankind. It was the night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the owner of majesty and honor, the most powerful, the most high, decided to send his own words down to this world. He provided the ultimate source of guidance to the entire mankind, whether they believe it or not. Subhanallah. All that we have today, all that we do of prayers, charity, and any other goodness has its root in that fateful night of Al-Qadr many, many years ago. Alhamdulillah, we are discussing about a surah. We are discussing about the Quran. We are just, all of us are already reciting the Quran, I know. But while we are discussing about a surah, just think about it, that in this blessed month of Ramadan, we are talking about a surah, about Quran, about the best night, about a special night, a special book, a special prophet, a special month. So many specialities are there and we are discussing about that right now. Whoever is connected, whoever is listening to me, I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah accept effort from all of you so that we can achieve the best from both the worlds. Really, this Ramadan, we want to make it the best Ramadan ever. But what we should do to make it the best, right now what we are doing, this is what that is required, to ponder over the verses of the Quran. We have taken a surah of five verses, but it's a very, very deep surah. I want all of you to be focused, be attentive. Just think about what we are discussing. Deeply think about it. Reflect over it. Try to bring it into your practice as soon as possible when we finish the lecture. Because this is the month of Barakah. Whatever you are planning, whatever you are trying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will make it easy for you. Just make dua because Quran is the best from every point of view, the best book ever. And we are discussing about a surah of Quran. Let's begin. As far as the essence of this surah is concerned, this is a very short surah, as you know, and it's about a night, Laylatul Qadr, night of decree. This is the night which marked the beginning of the revelation of the Quran to Prophet And we know that Quran's revelation to Prophet Muhammad provides an ideology, a 
a moral code and it promotes peace within the soul and the world, making his great night ever. سورة القدر إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من الفشار تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مدل عين فجر Indeed, we send the Quran down during the night of degree and what can make you know what is the night of decree? The night of decree is better than a thousand months. The angels and the spirit descend therein by permission of their Lord for every matter. Peace it is until the emergence of dawn. In Surah Al-Qadr, first we will understand, we will see its translation its background about the verses and then we will try to discover the relationship of Quran with Laylatul Qadr. What is Al-Qadr? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used this word Al-Qadr? And what is the excellence of this night? How to achieve the benefits of this night? What are the signs of this night and which do we have to make on this night? Let's begin. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. The first verse says, Indeed, we send the Quran down during the night of day. How can we say that we are talking about laylatul qadr and Quran? Because the word Quran is not there. The damir, the pronoun, anzalnahu, is pointing towards Quran. And what is the evidence? Quran is the evidence. In another surah, in Surah Dukhan, from verse 1 to 3, the same topic comes. By the clear book, indeed we sent it down during a blessed night. So this is the evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Quran in this night. That is called Laylatul Qadr or Laylatul Mubarak, a blessed night. The Quranic statement relating to this great event radiate with Allah's clear and shining words that itself is a light. We revealed it on the night of Qadr. What did we reveal? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Quran. So there is a connection between Quran and Laylatul Qadr. What's that connection? Let's explore it. If you see the sequence of this surah, before Surah Al-Qadr comes Surah Al-Alaq. In the last ayah of the surah, Al-Alaq, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Was jud wa Prostrate and come close to him. And then in Surah Al-Qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we learn of the night of Qadr, which is that night where it is possible for one to come closest to him. So it means the instruction, the commandment that has been given in Surah Tulala, that prostrate and come close to him, how we should do that. And then comes Surah Al-Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains how you can come closer to your Lord. The excellence of this night is due to Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Quran down by a special force of the angels. You know it was in the tablet. Special force of angels, they only access that tablet. Not all angels can be. So it's, it's a special event. Just imagine about it. Basically, Surah Allah mentions what was sent down in the first generation. And Surah Al-Qadr is mentioning the night in which it was sent down by special force of angels, headed by Jibreel, the most superior angel. 
under its special security from shaitan to the most honored prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and on the best place of honor makkah baitullah the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything is special and one more uh, i think one more thing that you should be noticing here this we already discussed that quran was revealed to the prophet at the beginning of his mission as compared to prophet musa like prophet musa was given the prophethood but the book the taurat was given later and as far as quran is concerned prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam became a prophet and he was given his book the holy book of quran at the same time at the beginning of his mission and the first revelation came in the month of ramadan on laylatul qadr and then it continued to be sent down peacefully until shortly before the death of the prophet that's why the word comes anzala grammatically anzala it means sent down at one time like torah gospel they came in uh, in a book form written form at one time but quran was revealed gradually so most of the time if you see in the quran nazala the word nazala is used sent down gradually in 23 years but in surah al qadr allah subhanahu wa taala has not used the word nazala he used anzalna why so the reason is explained by ibn abbas and other scholars as well he says allah subhanahu wa taala sent the quran down all at one time from the preserved tablet to the house of my baitul izza which is in the heaven of this world you know seven heavens are there above us so the first heaven of our world the same baitul like baitullah is on the earth baitul izza is on the first heaven the heaven of this world and the quran was transferred from the preserved tablet to baitul izza on the night of al qadr in the month of ramadan then later on it came down in parts to the messenger of allah based upon the incidents that occurred over a period of 23 years so that's why this is the wisdom this is the hikma of using the word anzalna so it came at one time from the preserved tablet to the baitul izz and later it came peacefully in 23 years so just think about this connection of quran and laylatul qadr if you notice right now we are fasting we think that the connection is between fasting and laylatul qadr but the connection is different because fasting was not enjoined until the second year after hijrah in other words 15 years after the prophet's mission the commandment of fasting came down after the first word of the quran was given 15 years after that so therefore the connection is between the quran and the month of ramadan and laylatul qadr laylatul qadr is a night in the month of ramadan which was known before fasting was enjoined so just think about this book quran which allah subhanahu wa taala has given super special status how should we connect ourselves to this book this book especially on this night what should we do on this night as we are seeing that it has a special connection with quran so what special can we do on this night how to recite quran how to reflect on quran how to develop a strong connection with quran because this quran this book is a miracle sent down from lo him mahfuz nobody can access lo him mahfuz within it, this quran is everything we need to succeed it has every answer to every problem and is our source of relief so whether your ramadan quran reading is a struggle for you or is it it is easy for you whether it's something you are not used to doing or 
whether you are blessed to read the entire Quran multiple times, whatever is the case, it still holds the prioritizing Ramadan Quran reading because it's a powerful way to set yourself up for success. As far as Prophet Wasallam's Sunnah is concerned, he says, Prophet once told this to Fatima, his daughter, Anha, he said, Jibreel used to review the Quran with me once every year. But this year he has reviewed it with me twice. And I think that my death is approaching. And you will be the first of my family to do. This is a hadith from Bukhari. Prophet Wasallam witnessed nine Ramadan months of Ramadan in his lifetime. This was the last. In every Ramadan, he was having a review with Jibreel. Ibn Kasir says that Ramadan was chosen out of all the months for the Quran. Because the beginning of the revelation occurred during that. So just think about it, that how should we recite the Quran? Mostly people are asking how many Quran should we complete or what is the sunnah way? So different uh, quotes and different uh, views you will see from scholars. Like uh, Al-Rabi Ibn Suleiman said that Al-Shafai used to complete the Quran 60 times in the month. Al-Qasim Ibn Al-Hafiz Ibn Asakir said, My father used to pray in congregation and read Quran regularly. He would complete it every week and every day in Ramadan. And we all know that reciting Quran in Ramadan it is mustahab. It is not obligatory. Uh, this is the statement in front of you. Imam uh, Nawawi, he said, commenting on how often the Quran should be completed. He says the best view is it varies from one person to another. The one who is seeking to understand it and ponder its meaning should limit himself to as much as he can understand fully when he reads. And the one who is busy spreading knowledge or other religious words or working for the public interest of the Muslim should limit himself to what will not cause him to neglect his work. If he is not among the categories mentioned here, then he should do as much as he can without reaching the point of boredom. The same question was asked by Sheikh Ibn Usaini, he, he was asked, is it obligatory for the fasting person to complete the Quran in Ramadan? And he replied that completing the Quran in Ramadan is not obligatory for the fasting person, but he should read the Quran a great deal in Ramadan, as that is a sunnah of the Prophet. He used to review it with Jibreel every Ramadan. So you can earn the reward of acting over sunnah. Double rewards you can achieve. The best reward is mentioned in this hadith reported by Aisha radiallahu anha. The Prophet وسلم, said, The one who is proficient in the recitation of the will be with the honorable and obedient scribes. And he who recites the Quran and finds it difficult to recite, doing his best to recite it in the best way possible, possible will have two rewards. So I know that for some people, recitation of the Quran is really difficult. They also want to complete the Quran. They are busy and sometimes they are struggling with some problems, whatever is the case. But if they have pure intention, they want to recite Quran and they are having difficulties, don't worry at all. We are without, we are like having different issues like low energy, lack of sleep, we are fasting, we are tired, we are exhausted. As far as the ladies, women are concerned, sometimes you are not in the condition because of the menstruation. Whatever is the case, just make pure intention. Make a connection with the Quran because we are discussing right now that a special connection exists between Lalatul Qadr and the Quran. So, okay, if it is difficult for you, just try it. Do your best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for what you are striving to achieve. Even if you are, your mission is not accomplished, even then, if you are trying your best, you will be rewarded. So no matter how difficult it is to recite Quran, 
don't neglect it in your life. And then comes the second verse, that is again, as grammatically the style is ma adraka ma and what can make you know what is the night of the day? Ma is basically a taju to surprise you and give you a, what in the world could possibly give you a clue what the night of how is. When something important is there, that is the tira taju. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this style. Yes, this is really amazing. We don't know about this. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creating a curiosity that you should try to explore it, discover it. You should be very curious to know. This verse is powerful in that, that Allah shows that we don't know. Just like he taught us so much. He's also the only one who can tell us what the Laylatul Qadr is. And Allah is repeating the wording of Night of Qadr again in the second verse. This is showing the importance of the night as well. So let's see what is an qadr. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used this word? Laylatul qadr. What is the meaning of an qadr? So different opinions exist. We will see the most famous opinions like uh, from Ibn Abbas and Qatada. The first opinion is it is named so because Allah Almighty decrees provisions, fates, and all created things in the universe during this night. And reveals them to the angels to abide. And it's confirmed by Surah Dukhans, verse number 4. Fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakeem. Therein that night is decreed every matter of ordainments. It's a decree. It's a destiny that is being given to the angels from the Hemafus. So on that night, the destiny of all creatures for the coming year is decreed. It is written who will live, who will die, who will be saved, who will be doomed, who will be destined for paradise, who will be destined for hell, who will be granted honor, who will be humiliated, where drought and famine will occur, and everything else that Allah wills in that year. This is the meaning, this is <clears throat> by the idea that the destiny of all the creatures, it is written on and Allah knows the best. So basically, the affairs of that year are dispatched from the Hemifus to the angels who record the decrees. Every matter of ordainment is decreed. All of this is already known to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is Al Ali. Before the commandment or decree is written down, Allah already knows this. But He makes known to the angels, what is going to happen. So see how important is the night. Because the decree is being handed over to the angels. And that is the time when we can make dua. Ibn Abbas said that you may see a man furnishing his home, or plowing his field. And he is one of those who are going to die. And it was said that on this night, People's destiny is shown to the angels. So what can we do? Prophet says that there is only one thing that can change the mind and that is dua. So what better time to make dua than on the night that all the decrees are sent? What better time? What else do we need? This is the time, make a complete list of duas and make dua with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Invoke him because he will grant you. He is ready to grant you. Make a list. Don't forget any dua. Sometimes we are just asking those things. Those are recent ones, like all the all our prayers. Recently I'm asking about something. I'll remember that dua and I'll make. But I'll miss many duas. Maybe I don't need them right now. But after few years, I after few years I'll need those duas. So it is better to ask now because your destiny is being written. This is the time to make dua. 
that is that's why it's called al qadr suratul qadr and the second meaning is al qadr denotes high esteem honor position like someone has a high position qadr so that qadr though in arabic is also used for honor dignity because it's a night that is venerated because of its special characteristics and because the one who stays up during this night becomes a special man, a man of honor. It's a night of unique honor, dignity, and glory. So much so that it's better than a thousand years. And the third opinion is uh, linguistically, the constriction, congestion, to be stuck in something. It is called this because so many angels are sent down to the earth on this night. The earth is filled and congested, packed with angels. So this is also an example. Laylatul Qadri Qayrum Min al The night of decree is better than a thousand years. Imam Ahmad recorded that Abu Huraira said when Ramadan would come, the messenger of Allah would say, Verily the month of Ramadan has come to you all. It's a blessed month which Allah has obligated you all to fast. During it, the gates of paradise are open, the gates of hell are closed, and the devils are shed, chained. In it, there is a night that is better than 1,000 years. Whoever is deprived of its good, then he has fully been deprived. So it's confirmed by this hadith, what is mentioned in this verse, that this night is better than 1,000 years. Mostly what people are making a mistake that they start calculating this night. Like if you are giving charity of one dharam on this night, then it will be multiplied and it will become like this, 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 so and so. This night is not talking about multiplication. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying it is better than 1000 months. So don't calculate it like that. Just try to do your best so that whatever good action you are performing right now on this night, it is better than 1000. You don't know how much it is. And as far as the excellence of this night is concerned, here I tell you a story and then we will see the excellence of this night. This story is really so inspirational that I would like to share with you all. It's shared by Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Badr. And this is a true story. He witnessed uh, it in Masjid in Nabawi. He says that. Once he was praying the Hajjur prayer in the mosque of the Prophet and the whole night he prayed around three and a half ajza, three and a half Jews. So he saw a man in front of him, an Indonesian man. He came, he was leaning on crutches with one leg amputated. And he also started praying the Hajjur. And when he saw him, he saw that he was standing on one leg and whole night he was on that one leg without his crutches and he was praying the same three and a half ajza. Whole night he prayed standing on one leg. Subhanallah. Sheikh witnessed him all by himself and he learned a lesson that he shared and those words are really golden words. He says that I don't know who that man is. When the sheikh was young, that time's story he is sharing right now. He says, I don't know where that man is from, but I learned a lesson. And what is the lesson? He says, being disabled is not in regard to one's limbs. Rather, being disabled is in regard to one's heart. So, so many problems we are discussing in the month of Ramadan that I can't do that. I can't go to that mosque, the prayer is too long, Tarabi is too long. I can't go to Tarabi, at home I'm so busy, I'm so tired. I'm sick, uh, I want to skip my fasting tomorrow because I'm having headache and I'm having this problem. So many issues people are discussing in this book. Just think about this story, but how is it possible that a man on one leg he's standing and all night he's praying the Hajjah. A, a man from the category of people of determination. 
Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us good health. Even when we are feeling headache, people are thinking that can we break the fast? How to achieve the full benefits of this month, of this night, if we are thinking in this manner? Just let's have a look at the excellence of this, according to Ahadi. And why this uh, night is excellent? See the wisdom. The Ummah of the Messenger of Messenger Prophet it has short lifespan in comparison to the previous nations. You know, in other nations, the nation Prophet Muhammad he was preaching for how many years? 950 years. So life expectancy was really high at that time. But as far as the Ummah of the Prophet is concerned, it is very short. And if we compare it geographically, we will see that life expectancy for most countries is reduced as compared to other countries. But if we compare it with other nations, we have very short lives. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his mercy is giving us a chance to earn the rewards of 83 years, that is more than 1,000 years. In rewards of 83 years of worship, by just worshipping him for one night. He's compensating that. And this is the thing that has been noticed by scholars and they share this wisdom. This is a hadith of Bukhari and Muslim in the two Sahih collections from Abu Huraira It's confirmed that Prophet Wasallam said, whoever stands in prayer during the night of an other with faith and expecting reward from Allah, he will be forgiven for his pains. What else do we need? Mostly people are delaying their Hajj. They want to perform Hajj in their old age so that all their sins, their previous past sins can be forgiven. The same thing is on this note. We have to achieve this target. Make it this as a target, as your goal, that you have to make yourself forgiven by Allah Subhanahu. You have to seek forgiveness while you are crying, while you are in sujood, whatever you can. Just keep your heart in front of your own. And he already knows what is inside the house. Just ask him for forgiveness. What is that for? Ibn Qayyim says that if the night of Qadr was an unknown night in the entire year, I would pray every night in the entire year. See, Subhanallah. See the passion, how enthusiastic he is. That if the night, if the night of Qadr is unknown, we all might, Subhanallah, we know that it's in the month of Ramadan, in the last ten nights of Ramadan, in the odd nights of Ramadan. He's saying, if it is unknown in the entire year, I would pray every night in that day. So what do you suppose should be done for merely 10 specific numbers? And this is the Hadith of Bukhari, Aisha Radiallahu reported, with the start of the last 10 days of Ramadan, the Prophet wasallam used to tighten his waist belt work harder and used to pray the whole night and used to keep his family awake for the prayers. We should also do this sooner. We have to act over this sooner. Like wake your children, other family members. If you are trying your best, sh share it with them. Share this hadith with them. Keep your family with you while you are home, your children. If you are doing it in the mosque, if you are at home, wherever you are, do it together. So let's see if night is, <clears throat> is showing its excellence right now, as we discussed. Just we will discuss now that how to achieve the benefits of this. Few things I'll share with you. As far as other scholars are concerned, like Patada, he says 
that Allah has selected the innate from his creation. From the angels, he selected messengers. From mankind, he selected messengers. From speech, he selected dhikr. From the spaces on earth, he selected masajir. From the months, he selected the So when you read that, which Allah has done. Subhanallah, so what a beautiful quote it is. And from that quote, we can conclude that what a beautiful the night of power, the night of decree is that has also been selected for the revelation. It has been singled out from other months, from other nights. So when you read it, give it an honor. So what to do? Surah al which was revealed on this blessed night, begins with the command, Irqara, to read, to read the Quran. And ends, was to the walk with you, to prostrate and draw close to your feet. So in that is a divine prescription for how the night is to be spent. From this wisdom, um, Imam al-Shafai, he says that if you... See the verses of Surah al and Surah Al-Qadr, then it can easily be concluded that some of the pious predecessors also, they prefer, prefer to spend this night in prayer, Salah, some in Quran, some in Dua, and all are devoted well. Other acts, of, other good deeds you can perform, most people are thinking that today I'll go and I'll pay one charity amount and I'll do this. That's okay, but as far as the Surah Al-Alaq and Surah Al-Qadr's verses are concerned, you can conclude that you have to focus upon your prayer, Quran, and Dua. While we are doing the good deeds, mostly people are not doing it with sincerity. They are doing it again like, like a ritual they are. So imagine the benefits of taking advantage of that of other every year for 10 years. Just imagine for a decade. What does it mean? That if you are performing good deeds every year on Lalat al Qadr continuously for 10 years, suppose. This would mean almost a millennium of good deeds in your faith. So many scholars suggest that if you have family problems, have been fighting with your loved ones, or haven't spoken to your siblings for a long time with, with the relationships of Raham, then this is the perfect time to bury the head and make up. The good that is going to come out of this night is unlike any other. So seize this opportunity. You know, when Prophet ﷺ was given the knowledge of this night, but because of an argument between people, Prophet ﷺ told that now I don't know what is the exact time, exact date of, what is the exact date of Laylatul Qadr. The knowledge was taken away because people were fighting. So just think about it. We are also making the same mistake. When Ramadan begins, especially the last Ashara begins, or on the Laylatul Qadr. Try to make people happy. Don't cut your ties. If someone is angry with you, if someone is on bad terms with you, just if they are not asking for forgiveness, suppose they are guilty, even then you forgive. You establish a new connection with them. Just forget and remove the grudges from your heart. Make your heart clean because you are going to appear in front of your Lord on this night with clean heart. You want your Lord to forgive you. And so many sins are forgiven and so many faults are conceived in this you know. But you know what people are doing? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is concealing our mistakes, our sins, but we ourselves making them public. On, mostly on social media, even in these nights I have seen people that they are sharing what deeds like 
I am not saying that those are haram deeds, but if even they are not good deeds, everything is being shared on social media, especially in the last Russia. People are doing some good deeds and then they are showing it off on social media. Don't do it in these nights. Be careful. Or don't share anything because most of the deeds are not good and we are sharing them. Like we are sharing, we are making our sins public. If Allah is hiding your sins, then let them be from the people and just make a step far to get them. Avoid using social media in the last generation. Avoid being uh, extremely socialized by people. Avoid these things. Avoid arguments, fighting. While people are going to the mosque, mosque they are um, parking their cars on the wrong places. Sometimes people are parking in the disabled parking. They are, the way is not clear for the passengers, for the pedestrians. They are creating so many difficulties on that night. Because of course, everyone wants to go to the mosque. Then people are not thinking that where they are parking their cars. Think about it. In the mosque, people, the ladies I have seen that if, the, if they are feeling cold, they are changing, if they are coming to the turning the AC on and off and then having a fight and arguing with other ladies for children when they are bringing to the mosque. People are fighting in the mosque, especially on these nights. This is really dangerous. You are ruining your deeds. Be careful. Don't waste your time. Just plan how you will spend your last asha. Many scholars mention that what's to be avoided beyond sin is wasting time with that patience, unnecessary of socializing, arguing, shopping. One should keep in mind that the night technically starts at Maghrib. Mostly people are thinking that night means night. Like after Taravi when they will be going for Tayamul Lail, that is the time. It's a misconception. The night starts at sunset, at Maghrib. So be alert ever. As soon as the sun sets. And make dua. As I told you, that the degree is being given to them. So make dua for them. Because don't be deprived. Sheikh Fozan says that if a Muslim makes dua, it is beneficial for him. And if he doesn't make dua, he forgets it, he misses it. And after one year, he says, Oh, I should have asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. So make a list. Don't miss it. Because the degree will be given to the angels and then it will not be changed. So if he doesn't make dua, then he's afflicted with what has been decreed. This is really sensitive topic. And critical thinking is required at this moment. And few tips I'm sharing here, like on this night, what you want to do. You are reciting, you are praying, you are doing a star. I know you are trying to complete your juz, your Quran, but try to find few verses. Highlight them, especially the verses that talk about the love with Allah. How to seek Allah's love. For example, this surah in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 165, So beautiful. Allah says, still there are some who take others as Allah's. They love them as they should love Allah. But the true believers love Allah even more. If you want to feel the love of Allah in your heart, just make do. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma inni asaluka hubba man. Wa hubba man yuhibbuka. Another beautiful verse. You can highlight these verses. You can ponder over them. You can try to Make, bring them into your practice and just make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you want to love, you want to feed his love, you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love you. See, wa ahsinu inna Allah yukhibu musim, the praise from us, from Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 190. And do good, indeed Allah loves the doers. You want to be among us in need, make dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you a musim.
لن تنالوا البر حتى تنفقوا مما تحبون وما تنفقوا من شيء فإن الله بيعلم If you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will love you and you will love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to reach that level, what do you have to do? Never will you attain the good reward until you spend in the way of it. From that which you love. Because mostly we are giving for Allah's sake, but we are not giving what we love. So if something is that that you really love, you like that thing, it is in your possession. Can you give it for Allah's sake to someone? Can you make this sacrifice? And if you do it on this night, in the month of Ramadan, in the last Ashara, or on this Laylatul Qadr, you will see the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will feel it. And whatever you spend, indeed, Allah will know. So just try to find these verses, highlight them, make dua, and then ponder over these verses. This is the special connection of Quran with Laila. Then again, in uh, Sona Nipte Maja, it comes that verily this month has presented itself to you. There is a night within it that is better than a thousand months. Whoever is deprived of it has been deprived of all good. And none is deprived of its good but the mahroom, he who is truly deprived. So don't be among mahroom. Verse number four, Tanazzalu al-malaikatu wa ruhu fiha bi-izni rabbihim min kum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He instructs all the angels, especially Jibreel, to go down, to descend. The angels and the spirit descend therein by permission of their Lord for every matter. Zaid bin Mansur said, that it's security in which shaitan cannot do any evil or anything. So many angels are coming. Just imagine that scene with an, on entire earth between the heaven and earth. So huge, a large number of angels are there. This surah vividly portrays the message that the night is great because of the descent of the angels and Jibreel in particular by their Lord's permission. They fill all the space between heaven and earth. In such a splendid and universal celebration. So if you are playing in your homes, make sure that the pictures, drawings, statues, these things are not there. Because angels do not enter such houses. <clears throat> From Tafsir Ibn Kasir, he says that angels come down when Allah's blessing and mercy come down. Just as they come down when the Quran is decided, and they surround the circles of dhikr, and they beat their wings for the one who sincerely seeks knowledge out of respect for them. So normally out of Ramadan also, if at some places the people are making dhikr, dua, they are reciting Quran, in that gathering, the angels are there, they surround that gathering, they make dua for those people, they beat their wings, for the one who sincerely seeks for it. <clears throat> so these are the circumstances when the angels are coming. But on that night, a large number of angels are coming. They are making dua. Salamun hiya hatta matulayu. Peace it is until the emergence of God. So this night is great because of the descent of the angels, Jibri. And peace is the Atada and Ibn Zaid both said, this means all of it is good and there is no evil in it until the coming of Fajr. And Ashabi said that angels giving the greetings of peace during the night of Fajr to the people in the masjid until the coming of Fajr. Mujahid says, no disease afflicts anyone on this night. See how peaceful is this night. The ultimate end of our faith is peace and tranquility of God. Here and now. That is what this night of Lalatul Qadr is. It's a night of peacefulness and mercy by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what are the signs according to a hadith of Musnad Ahmad? It has been narrated that 
sir prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the signs of lailatul qadr are that it's serene and clear as if the moon is shining it's peaceful and calm it's neither too cold nor too hot and no shooting star appears in it until among its signs is that the sun rises even the following morning without any visible like the full moon the devil will not be able to rise and uh, a scholar al qadi he mentioned two opinions regarding the sun rising he says that the first opinion is it's a sign that allah assigned that you can recognize that it was the lanatul qadr because the sun is rising without rays this is a sign and the second opinion is that because ma many angels move around on that night descending on earth and ascending with what they brought down in doing so the angels will block the sun's rays with their wings that's why the sun is without visible and why the date is not mentioned if you see the important dates are not mentioned the time of the day of judgment has not been defined on friday when you are making dua between asr and maghrib the time dua when dua is accept being accepted it is not mentioned it has not been defined. the specific 99 names of it not been defined we memorize them we recite them we know but all the names we don't know why to encourage the muslim to strive hard in worship and dua and zikr during all the last 10 nights and don't limit their efforts to that night ibn hajar al asqalani he says that he reports 46 opinions in his commentary of sahih bukhari 46 opinions about the date of lailatul qadr but the conclusion is they try to the worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the entire last session on all 10 months so that you will be confident that you achieve, you witness the Laylatul Qadr. And as far as, okay, let's see a summary first. As we know, Allah has revealed a complete surah, surah al Qadr, concerning this night, which will be recited until the young man. It is a night on which Quran was sent. Allah described it as being better than a thousand months. Allah described it as like a Mubaraka last night. Many angels and Jibreel descend on this night. This night is a peace. It's safe from shayateen. No evil or cause. Shayateen cannot do any evil or cause any harm. And in that night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the commandments, the decree to the angels regarding every matter of all things. So let's see the dua that Aisha radiallahu asked from Prophet sallallahu and then he taught him Allahumma inna ka afumun tuhibbul afwa faafun The name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is afumun the first part is affirming the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Afumun, it means all pardon. And the second element, what it is saying? Allahumma inna ka afumun, that is the first part. Tuhibbu lakwa faafun. So the second part, the second element of this dua, of this dua is mentioning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves al afumun. He loves pardon. And this is really amazing. Because this is very different from how we may interact with other human beings. When we may forgive someone, but we don't forget. While we are forgiving, we are reminding him what he has done. But as far as Afuun is concerned, the Prophet instructed us to call out to Allah using this divine name, Afuun, the most forgiving. On this night. Why? Because it has a special connection with the root of Afun means eraser, effacement, al maho, al tams. It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you and then He deletes your sin from the book of deeds. On the day of judgment, 
you will not be reminded of it. It will not be there anymore. This is a full moon. But how, what we are doing when we are forgiving you? We, we need to learn this lesson that how we may interact with other humans. We may forgive them, but not forget. So when we turn to Allah in repentance, we, ask, we are asking for His forgiveness and ask for Him to pardon us. So He actually loves that action when we ask Him to forgive. He loves forgive, to forgive us. He loves this action. The same thing should be with us in our, in when we forgive people. So we should also love that action when, when we are forgiving something. We should get to that point and strive to get to that point where we are unable to pardon. We have to pardon others and we have to love that action. Same way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is loving this action. Allah loves forgiving. Allah loves pardon. And this is one of the qualities of the people who are striving to achieve taqwa during life. Suppose if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us by making this dua, He will delete those sins from our people. So just call this name Allah's name. Allahumma inna ta Oh Allah, you are forgiven. Allah, you are forgiven. You love forgiveness. So forgive me. And do the same thing with others. If you are angry with someone, if people are angry with you, if someone hurt you, you, you forgive him. For Allah's sake. So that Allah can forgive you too. And you should love that action of forgiving Thus, our prayers to Allah on this night are explicitly connected to our plea for Him to erase the consequences of our mistakes. The Quran states that Allah's Afuun protects calamity from being decreed for us as a result of our sins. And this is the verse and whatever strikes you of calamity, it is because of what your hands have done. Although He pardons, Ya Afuwa great. It means Allah is pardoned. He pardons a great deal. If this is the right time you should make duas that can change the degree. Because on this night, every ordained matter is decreed. Then it is upon us to know that the Prophet said, nothing awards the divine decree except this. For this reason, it is upon us to make lots of dua during this night, such that the evil can be averted. Maybe some calamity is about to come. Maybe something bad is about to happen. Maybe we will not achieve what we are trying to achieve. Maybe we will be going to see a failure. Whatever it is, we don't know. We even don't know that next Ramadan, we will be here. I will be teaching you. You will be listening to me. Nobody knows. But on these nights, when the planning of the next year, the schedule of the next year, the rota of the next year is being handed over to the angels, we can make work to change the divine decree so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive us. He can change the decree. When you are giving charity, what happens? Any calamity that is about to reach you, it is stopped. The sadaqah stops that. We know that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change the decree. Dua can change taqdeer. So make dua, lots of dua. In sujood, in tahajjud, in qayamun layl. Make lots of dua with pure heart. You forgive people. And then you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And Allah will accept, inshallah. Here we finish. And I make dua that whoever has participated in conducting this workshop, these four sessions, with special thanks to Al-Qudayl Academy and all those staff members who worked really hard.
to conduct this workshop and all of you who attended all the sessions or who tried their best to attend may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of you may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us give us tawfiq to witness the laylatul qadr may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the best from this ramadan may allah accept all our deeds our prayer our fasting worship dhikr quran recitation everything and and here i finish inshallah after this workshop after ramadan we will be together again subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh